This week's Just You Award goes to Tiralon Watkins. Her podcast is called Mamatize Your Passions. There's something that you do that I just want to acknowledge you for. Oh, because I work in radio, I have this thing about you guys and everybody. I try to listen to so many podcasts and so many of them do that and they feel like they're being inclusive, but people that are lonely or people that have trauma, that feels exclusive. It's like now I put you in a big group and I've stepped up on stage way above you. The feeling, you don't do that. You always say you in case you want to know. You never, I listened and I was like so happy because you don't go, you guys need to know. You're like, you might want to know. You were brilliant. And I felt like I was leaning in, like she's talking to me. Like I felt like I was connecting with you, even though you are talking to a zillion people, every person listening is probably going, she's talking to me. That's a beautiful thing because we're at a very lonely time after COVID. So many people, they just need to feel like they matter. They feel seen and heard and you were brilliant. Congratulations and keep up the great work. It is welcome to the world's best health secret. The podcast where we bring you life-changing work from those people that you didn't even know. Now I feel like the world's best kept secret. That feels like life work. If you have been thinking or saying, I want to do a podcast, but then immediately you think, I'm not techie. I hate my voice. Who would listen? What would I say? If you are a woman over 40, you have things to say. And with my course, The Podpreneur Blueprint, you can get a podcast up and running within a week if you'd like. If you're not techie, don't worry. I give you options of how to find someone that can help you. We are not islands. We don't do this alone. If not now, when? Because on New Year's, when you make that new resolution, this year, I'm going to think about this. You could be saying, this year I did, and I have 52 episodes. You can do this. Learn all about podcasting with the Podpreneur Blueprint System. Go to www.coachlori.com and get your flash sale today. Somebody's praying for an answer, and you have it. Will you say yes? Go to www.coachlori.com. That's L-A-U-R-I-E. Has your life, your dreams been interrupted? Good news, it is possible to reinvent our lives. People are doing it every day, and some are brave enough to share the struggles, disappointments, and challenges. If you are looking for a new beginning, a do-over, or to rediscover your passion, maybe even find a new one, then grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Interrupted, Act 2, Reinventing Your Legacy, with your host, Coach Lori. Prima Joke is the consultant, host, of the world's The Best Kept Secret podcast, creator of the 100 True Believers. She helps you with life-changing work, getting it in front of those who will depend on it the most. She is renowned for her uncommon ability to help people create interviews that get clients. She works with those who have life-changing work, but constantly feel like you're the best kept secret. Ever felt that way? Prima believes all you need is 100 true believers in your life-changing work and not millions of followers. Prima's work exists to bring life-changing work in front of those whose life or business depends on it. She believes that success in life and business is 10% strategy and 90% mind work. She is determined to defend the work of those that help human beings get out of their own way to create the lives they desire. Welcome, Prima. Oh, my goodness. I have been so excited to talk to you. The feeling is mutual. I love this story. What brought you to do your podcast, The Best Kept Secret? I think 2020 to twenty. 23 pretty much i was doing business coaching helping coaches build and monetize their personal brands and i did that for three years and then i had this one very successful coach who had made 
over $250,000 in she was such a driven person. I didn't even know how to describe her. She was the most motivated, most ambitious person I'd ever met. And what happened for her is she decided to partner with someone. She decided to find someone. They did a joint venture. They made a pro of 100000 And then they fell out. And the business partner ran away with the money. And I didn't know about that, but that was happening for her. And then along the way, her loved one got a problem. And so she had to give away her kidney to that person. And what happened really is she couldn't recover from it. Her body was shutting down. We're talking one year later. We're now in 2024. Her body is sh- shutting down. She's depressed. She's very angry at everyone else. And then she messages me. That was after my wedding and says, Prima, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, everything okay so we jump on a call and i look at her and her body is beginning to sink in and her bones are visible and i'm like what happened she tells me the whole story and i'm like so what's going on now it's like the medics are saying i'm not responding and i need to go to india and i'm like wow why do you have to go to india because my body is not responding i look at her and she's very resentful she's very angry she's very negative energy and this is not who i know how to be and she finally says to me rory she says you know what prima if i ever make it out of this i want to build a legacy i don't want to die a best kept secret i feel like i have helped people i feel like i've made a lot of money but i feel like if i died today no one would talk about me in the next year i feel like i would have died the best kept secret i feel like i have not helped people in as much as i wanted to i feel like i need more people to have known about me and i hope that i can make it back and in that moment i knew I knew that this is the work I had to be, helping people just stop being the best kept secret. What is so amazing is along the way, as I was searching and looking, just searching for answers, I knew that it had to be something about her mind. I knew it had to be something about her feelings. I knew it had to be something about how she's approaching the whole thing that is draining her. It it couldn't just be the medical. I just knew there was something about her energy, where she was coming from, that was so old. And so I decided I wanted to look. And I I met a healer and I, I talked to her about my client. And she was like, I know exactly what is wrong with her. That's survival mode. She's not helping her body heal. She's not self-regulating. I can definitely help her. So I get them in contact. At this point, my client has blown away all the money she had. She's burned the business to the ground. She's on the last dollar, like zero. She's paid for everything, medication, and she has no money. They begin working together. And two months later, she's back. She's bounced back. They don't tell me. And then she says, I want to have a call. I'm like, everything okay? She's like, yeah, I get on that call. Cheeks gained weight and she's back. And I'm like, wow, hold on. What happened? And she tells me the story. And that's when I decided that I was going to help people who have this kind of work, which helps human beings get out of their way. So healers, people who do subconscious work, people who do trauma work, That is when I decided that I wanted to defend their work and use my marketing, my sales, my messaging skills to help put their message out there. I didn't know about them at that point. And I feel like this was such a miracle. And I was like, where were all these people all my life? Why does nobody know about them? And I decided that I was going to build this whole thing. And my work was to help those who had such a message put it out. And in the wrong run, it would help them stop being the best kept secret, which is really what my client, what her wish was on her deathbed was she didn't want to die a best kept secret. So that's how the the best kept secret podcast came to life. When you said, where have they been my whole life? When I've been doing research on people with trauma, that's over Mm -hmm. 60% of our audience. If we speak in a way or we don't recognize that we can lose the people that actually most likely need us more. And I love it that you made that connection. As I was doing strategy work, I realized the people who came in, I gave them the same strategy, same something. And people took off, made six figures with the advice and others didn't start. And I was always, it was always a question like, why didn't this person do nothing? Why did this person pay me 10K and did nothing with the help? What happened? Like, I always wondered why you can give the same information, same training, same support to people, and they do different things with the information. That piece, I never quite understood it. I always thought, oh, some people are ready and others are not. But what I realized is really the level of success of someone depends on their level of awareness. It's all energy, it's all consciousness, it's all healing. 
people want what they want they are motivated they want to do it they feel cold but something invisible sits in the way and they just can't get themselves to do it and it's not that there's anything wrong with them it's just that they don't know why they don't know i feel like there's a lot of people who are stuck in strategy and they don't know why nothing is working they've hired 10 coaches and nothing is working but they've never really made the switch back to could it be my energy could it be me could it be me is not helping because they're like oh, what's wrong with me but maybe it is just a conscious level maybe there is trauma that needs to be uprooted maybe there is subconscious programming that needs to get right Maybe there is something else that is standing in the way of you climbing that mountain. And so I'm really happy that I got into this work. I'm not even teaching it, but every day I interview experts who do it. And I love it because it's it's so life-changing. When I interviewed my client, I did um, a little interview because I brought the healer on and I wanted to tell the world about her work. And I brought my client in and said, I want you to, to tell your experience. And she said, Prima, you've helped me build my business from zero to six figures and more. But the best gift you've ever given me is connecting me to someone who could help me get out of the way. And sometimes the best strategy you can give someone is to let them know that the problem they're trying to solve is not the problem. And so if somebody is, is, is struggling with trauma, really strategy or business, do this, do that, that's not what they need. What they need is for you to say, I think you should talk to expert X because until we approve this identity, the strategy may not work. And I, I feel like most business coaches who do strategy work in the 3D world, they don't know this information. And so you just stuck and you don't know why people are not getting results, but people are not getting results because they've just never stepped out of their own way. For me, it was a big realization that there's people I cannot help because they need a different type of help or support at that point. It brings hope. I think the biggest thing I wish was in the world is that people did not take money for problems they can solve. The reason I think I went into this work, the second reason is I struggled for a full year at some point. I was just out of alignment at that point. I tried like 12 pivots. I hired five coaches and everyone took my money and said, I'll help you. Everyone took my money and said, I'll help you. I didn't know what was wrong. I was doing all of the work. I was going through everything. I am the kind of person that implements, but something was just off and I wasn't clear and I had fog. And everyone kept taking money and saying, I'll help you. And they didn't help me. And I recall, I went back to this coach who I had hired like four years ago. And he was just the first person who made me make my first door launch. And I said to him, look, I've hired five coaches or so, made 12 pivots. I still feel like I am worse than I was when I started doing all this. Can you help me? He said, the answer is simple. Get all these Google Docs, because I sent him like, what I thought was wrong. I said, okay, this is what I think is wrong. But I had Google Doc linking into another one, into another one, into another one. I was like, this is a problem. This is where I'm stuck. I need to find my one word. Blah, blah, blah. He said, prima, pause. This is a problem you have. That is not how you build. You don't build things from your head. You have an idea. You don't care what anybody thinks. You get to market. You start talking. You start getting people in your room. And you build one step at a time. Never in your life have you ever seen a step before you took it. And this is your problem. You're trying to build from the drawing board. You're trying to find your one word problem. You're trying to find your specific exact avatar and it's not going to happen. Prima, leave all those Google Docs, leave the one words behind and move because that's your superpower. The speed at which you get from idea to execution. That's your superpower. Never lose that. All the answers you're looking for, everyone you're hiring, including me, they're giving you answers that are worse than the answers in your head. So move and just begin to follow what happens. That is when I snapped back and I just started moving. And so when I could understand this this shift in me, and I didn't even call it energy, I didn't even call it spirituality, I just knew that I always knew that instinct that what I'm doing is feels good. And then I do it and people come and I do more and one step leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. I really understood why people get stuck because they give up and they kind of expect a mentor to help them. But you have more answers in you than anyone in the world. Sometimes you're really stuck and the answer is going to come from you. And so the ability to snap back and go, I actually know what is good for me. That is very powerful because every mentor, if they were operating from the knowing of what you want, things could be easier. Because today when I speak to a mentor, I say, I want to do this. How do I, like, what have you experienced in moving from here to here? Because I am here 
and I'm going here, and this is how I'm going to get there, but I have this little thing in the in, in the way. Fix for me this. I am not saying what should I do. No, I'm saying there's this little thing here. Can you remove it for me? And so the help looks different because I'm coming from a place of clarity. Like I know what I want. And I feel like this is a gift we can give to our coaches. But also I think as a coach, not taking money because someone is willing to pay it. Going, do I really see the problem with this person? Yes or no? And having the, I don't know. I think it's having the love and the ability to say, I actually can't help you. I think Coach X may be able to help you better. Because that's the work I do now. People come and I'm like, I think your problem can be solved by X. I think that's the best gift we can give someone is to actually tell them that we don't have the tools to help them. And maybe we know someone. I think for me, getting to a place where you can say no to money and say, oh, I think the other person is who you need. Because I reached a point and I told my client, you know what, Flo, I don't think I can help you. I think you're at a point where I am like, my hands are tied. I don't know what is wrong with you, but I think it is what is happening between your head and your ears. And so we're going to look in other experts because I don't have those abilities. And she said it was the best thing anyone has ever done for her. I am so on board with you with that. Now, a few times you've mentioned expat. And so you are working in a third world country and you're helping people build business. I'm living in a third world country. I'm down here in Uganda with my husband. My husband is from UK. We met on Facebook, which is like a story for another day. But I wrote this post where I was sharing my worst moment, which is like I was in a supermarket. I was at rock bottom. I had no money coming in because I had left employment, corporate Africa, and I was doing this online thing. And I hadn't figured out how to get people to pay me. And so I was really broke at that point. And I remember walking around the supermarket for 30 minutes looking for the cheapest toilet paper and I couldn't find it. And I shared that story and my husband saw it and said, oh my God, is there a person on this planet who has the ability to speak such a level of truth? This is my wife. And things started there. But talk about third world country. I am here and no one knows what I do. People think I do Bitcoin. People don't know what I do. All I do is I sit on my computer. My husband does the same. So we're like two people who are always in our houses talking endlessly about things no one knows. And so no one knows what I do really. But where I come from in Uganda, power goes for no reason at any one point with no a lot. Power goes, internet goes. And so you would wonder how I do this work because I also don't know. But what I learned to do over the years is just surrender. Like if it's meant to happen, it's got to happen. And for some reason, when I'm on an interview like this, the power never cuts. And immediately when we go off, it cuts. And I'm like, okay. So I had to reach a point where I surrendered and let the universe really take over. And that is how I have built this business from this country where anyone seeing what I do from here would not believe me. Like if you came here and saw the country and how things run, you'd never believe me. But it's happened. I just think it's it's barely when God puts a calling on your heart. That that means there's enough people praying for whatever you're trying to do. And that means the how belongs to him. And so for me, I am clear of the calling. I'm clear that I'm saying yes. The how does not belong to me. That's my belief. The how, it does not belong to me. I love that. I always say, you say yes, and the how shows up. What I love about your work is when you got to that point where you were so clear, Mm. then you recognized that, that that's what people are actually looking for. They're looking to get really clear. What I find is so often people want to throw in everything instead of get really clear and specific about what it is, because often the thing that we do that we're brilliant Mm. at feels so easy and not important that we sort of brush it off. I would agree that you're too close to your own intelligence because when I started, I wanted to do business coaching. So I positioned myself as a coach of coaches and coaches were like, "Mm, no, really, if we want a coach of coaches, we will go to someone who's done eight figures or whatever. And so coaches were like, "Mm, mm, coach of coaches, I don't really know. And then I wrote my content. I just kept going and coaches didn't care. And I was like, okay, but why are they not listening? I can help them. I know I can help them. I had the same skills, clarify your message, simplify it, be clear on your offers, get to sell. And coaches were like, "Mm, no, really, I kind of have that eight figure person who's helping me out. And then I didn't know until that coach told me, Prima, move. You have one seed of clarity, move. Don't worry about the rest. That seed of clarity for me was like, oh, you love podcasting? Why don't you just start speaking? And I remember talking to him. I said, I want to do a podcast, but I'm not clear of the context. And I don't want to just talk about coaching because I have a variety of lessons to share. And he said to me, Prima, this is your podcast. I talk about coaching, consulting, and everything. 
everything in between. You're ready to go. And that kind of stabbed something. I started talking and I recall a friend of mine said, hey, Prima, can I be your guest? And I was like, cool. So I interviewed him and he said, you've helped me understand my message. And he'd been doing it for 25 years. He said, oh my God, Prima, you are so good at breaking down my message and simplifying it. And I was like, isn't that amazing? And so I started to go in the market and say, hey, do you want me to help you simplify your message? And the coaches started saying, yes, 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 yes. And I began to interview them. Each one of them in their own capacity told me, Prima, you have a way of understanding what I do and simplifying it so well that people will buy. And I'm so glad I said yes. And so people told me what I was giving them and what they were appreciating me for. And so I moved from coach of coaches and started saying, hey, I'm your partner. Come and let's talk about your, your work. Are you the best kept secret? No problem. Come, let's talk about the work you do and let's offer people what you. And now I can go to my profile. I can message anyone, Rory, and I can say, come on my podcast. And they will say yes. And off of this, we're having deals. We're having offers. People are taking me up for coaching. Everything is happening. But I had to kind of shift from I'm the coach of coaches to, hey, I'm your partner. Let's share. Let's, let's talk about your message. That is the door. And through talking about their message, they realize the actual skill I have, which is being able to listen to what you're saying and simplifying it for people that they know why they should choose you among the 10,000 other experts. But that was so close to my nose that I would never have chosen to do it. What did I do? Oh, the coach of coaches, oh, personal branding, or oh, legacy branding, all oh, that is amazing. But really what people are appreciating me for is the ability to simplify what they do, their legacy, their work. So now we're really doing this interview where I help the coach talk through their work, from the problem they solved, who they solve it for, to their process, to a place where we offer something. And now they're like, oh my God, I don't need a VSL. I don't need a webinar. I just need this interview. It's just too close to my nose that I would never have said that is the thing. And you know, the problem is even my coach would never have landed on it. All he had to say was prima move. And somehow I just had to pick it up. I just had to pick it up. I'm, I'm in line with what you're saying. Like, it's just too close. You will probably miss it. You want the more challenging things, the bigger thing. People need that. And you know what people are telling me? The more experienced they are, the more they appreciate the service. Because I'm like Prima, I've spent my entire life being a doctor. I have spent 40 years doing this. And for me to go on the internet and start marketing myself and saying that I'm, I'm amazing, it just feels wrong. And when you say you're going to interview me through the same process and help me market that way, that is so helpful. And so it is really appealing to these people who have a lot of wisdom and they're like, really? Like, do I have to become an expert marketer? Maybe not. People who appreciate the consulting model, the way it's done offline. People come, inquire, you either take them or you don't. And so people crave the same feeling online, if it makes sense. And that is what I'm bringing to them. But if you say to me, this was the business from day one, not in a million years. Like I would never have dreamt about it because it was just too obvious for me. I'm just blind to my own genius. I know you want to work with Prima. I know you want to get clear <laughs> on your message. How do people find you? Oh my God. My website, primajob.com. There's a button that says become a guest. I love to interview you about your life-changing work and I love the world to know about it, everything about it. So become a guest. We're building a platform. It's the world's best kept secret podcast. And if you have amazing work that changes lives and you just are not so excited about talking about yourself, that's your platform. I would love to talk about your work. I would love people to know about it. I'd love to talk about your offers and everything in between. I'd love to create for you an asset which can bring your business day in, day out for, I don't know, the unforeseen future. I love that. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> Finally, you said yes to podcasting. So walk us through what it was like to open a mic, to do a recording, to what was that like for you? I didn't have imposter syndrome. I didn't have, I didn't think I couldn't do it. I knew I could do it. It's funny because when I first started out, I did, I did the same thing I'm doing now. I just didn't know anything. So the first thing I started four years ago in 2020 was I was in a group mastermind and that was Rise Up World for those who know Pete Vargas. And 
they said you have to, I don't know, pivot what you are doing offline to online. And I couldn't make sense of that. I was doing fashion. What was I supposed to do with fashion in a country where people are experiencing winter, summers? I don't understand those things. And so I said, well, I know how to interview people. And so I'll interview them. And so I got these experts and I just interviewed them, interviewed them. Inter- but I didn't know how to monetize that. I didn't know how to monetize that. I didn't know how to help. I didn't know how to add value to their message. And all I did is I interviewed people and then they left. I interviewed people, they left. And I, so I was doing these interviews, but I didn't know. So, so why after that? You know, I was just someone who was just asking questions. But then now I'm doing it, but doing it with skin in the game where actually the expert goes away with a better message. And what was that like for me? The first day, like I had done lives, I had done trainings. I was, I was already comfortable with the mic. But now to say the podcast, first of all, the name wasn't clear. What is it called? And so I just got the microphone. I said, welcome to the Prima Job Show. Okay. And when I just talked and I said, you know, I'm going to be talking about coaching, consulting and everything in between. And the next day I came and talked and came and talked and came and talked. And then I realized that I started being random. Welcome everybody. You know, I started to learn those things. Like who is everybody, you know? I started to learn slowly by slowly. And then it became... Woke up the school of hard knocks. Yeah, I could speak about my school of hard knocks and I could interview others who wanted to share their message about the things they'd done. So I said, oh, welcome to the school of hard knocks where we talk about our lessons from our scars, our tears, our frustrations. And people were like, okay, that's good. And then now it is welcome to the world's best kept secret. A podcast where we bring you life-changing work from those people that you didn't even know. It. Now I feel like the world's best kept secret. That feels like life work. That feels like something bigger than myself. That feels like, oh my God, we're building this thing, which is going to be the best in the world. And I don't know, but it just, you can't want to figure it out all on day one. You have to allow yourself to press the mic and mumble. And then tomorrow you have to allow yourself to be better. And tomorrow you have to allow yourself to be better. And the pieces started coming in. I started having people who were giving me feedback. Like Rory would say, Prima, you don't say everybody. You say, hey, you, I see you. And I'm like, oh my God, that is so good. And I started getting bits and pieces, bits and pieces. I'm still learning and things just work out. But you have to start. You have to press record the things I recorded and I deleted them but it is fine I, like when I was doing my intro I did it 30 times and every time I was like what what am I saying but after 30 times there is something which I feel comfortable with and so sometimes you have to do it a hundred times and that's fine like it's okay it's okay to start it's okay not to be perfect it's okay to just go it's okay to just press record and rumble and it's okay not to publish that episode it is okay, like, but you have to get it out of your mouth, out of your head and say it because the more you say it, the clearer it becomes. So my journey, it's been imperfect, ugly. The first person I interviewed, I started and I forgot the name of the show and we laughed. I said, okay, let's try again. And we didn't edit it because it was so funny. It was We did it live. You know, I first did them live on YouTube, but then my husband told me, but nobody watches it if you're not grand card. And I said, why not? He said, no, you don't do them live. You actually do the recorded. So those ones get structured. I'm like, okay. So now we got them, brought them down. And like, you have to figure it out as you go. There's no perfect blueprint. Rory will give you the blueprint, but even in the blueprint is your DNA, which doesn't fit in the blueprint. And so you have to figure it out. I don't think there is a wrong and right. Which allow yourself to move, like allow yourself to learn, allow yourself to mess it up because it's through the mess that we get better. That is brilliant wisdom. The space from where you are to where you want to go, which for me is usually how do you stop being the best kept secret? How do you make sure you don't die with your message inside of you? How do you make sure you actually bring an impact to the world? I believe you don't need a million people. I believe you need a hundred people who believe in your work. And do you know what else I believe? That a hundred people can be done one-on-one. Simplify it. Don't get lost in the tech. I've reached a point where I have even stopped my official email. I've stopped all of the automations. I want to prove to people that you can use a calendar link. You can use Zoom. You can use Gmail. You can use Facebook Messenger to run your business. Because that's all I'm doing. I have 317 people in my calendar. And the way I communicate with them is Gmail. Ask Rory. She was on my podcast. Calendar link messenger 
That's all I did. Like I want to remove complication for people and show them you can have an impact without being dragged in the MLAs and all of this. You need a hundred people who are willing to talk about you with another person. What problem do I have that you can solve for me? Because we're drawn to people who want to give us things. Everyone has a problem and they're looking for answers. And the way that you get into people's inboxes or ears is if you're interested in them in solving their problems. So what, what is your message? A clear message, what it does is it chases a lot of people, but it draws the people in that want your message. It builds a tribe. The market is so noisy. And for you to cut through the noise, you have to have a clear message and a clear person that you're speaking to. The second one is a high value offer. You need an offer right now, which is not your back end offer, which is not your, you know, VIP offer, but you need something in the world right now that will get you in front of someone having a conversation. And I don't mean a lead magnet. I don't mean your masterclass. I don't mean your workshop. I mean, what can you give the world that gets you into a conversation with the first one out of a hundred people? When you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, now your content makes sense to them. When now I meet Rory's work, I am consuming it as her friend. Oh, Rory, the, the lady who's been on radio for 40 years. I love her. Not what's her hook, what's her image. No, her name is what is going to get me to scroll, to stop scrolling because I know her. How can you build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with those 100 people? Because your content on your emails or whatever the thing you're doing will only make sense if there is a personal relationship. I feel like the market is moving from the guru and who can do the best funnels and who can have the best automation to, I know this person, so I'm going to stop and read their content. I'm going to comment because I like her, because I saw her, because she came on my podcast. There has to be a way that you can give me a result before I pay. I credit myself at simplifying messages for people. So then what do I do? I call them on my podcast and I do it live in the interview. So by the time we are done, there is a clear result from A to B. And off of that, we can now have the conversation if they want to move further. So number one, a clear message. And no further gets you in a conversation. Think the unscalable things. The unscalable things is where the magic is right now. And so I have met people, beautiful people, amazing people who are worried about scaling and a big email list, but really there's no one. They're not talking to anyone. So why are you worried about an email list if you're not talking to one person? Why are you worried about one to many if you don't have one person? Why? Why are you worried about selling one to one if no one is buying? Who said we had to do all the things? All you need is a hundred people who believe in your message. That is music to my ears because what I believe is missing is that one-on-one. -on -one. If you start worrying about scaling, you're competing with Tony Robbins. And let's face it, Tony Robbins is not your competition. In the world of AI, where ev everyone has AI'd their head, don't you think there's real value in one-on-one? -on -one? Don't you think there's real value in helping people? Don't you think that people may be willing to pay you much more if they could access you and get their transformation? Prima, before we go, <laughs> what is it? You have said so many incredible things. What is it you really, really want us to know? If there is a message in your heart, that is because there is someone praying every day for that message. There could be 10 million people in the world for all I care with the same message. But if there is a calling, if there is a need, if there is a desire, if there is a pull on your heart, that is bringing a message and getting you up to deliver the message. That is because there is a need and demand for that message. Only you can impact those people. I'll, I'll end with a small story. At one point, I had imposter syndrome. I was like, oh, who am I? A girl from Africa, a third world country. Who's going to listen? Like, who's going to listen to me for advice? And I remember I went to this event it was an online event and it was by a gentleman called nick this man has no limbs he has no legs it's called nick ministries he's a bit famous and i looked at the guy and he was so excited the room was full of thousands and thousands of people by this time i'd listened to tony robbins and i didn't believe i could do it i'd listened to oprah i didn't believe i could do it i'd listened to grant cardone i didn't believe i could do it i'd listened to every guru you can imagine and i was like yeah, but I'm in Africa, you know, there's no power here. There's no, like, how can I possibly stand in front of someone from New York City and have an impact? And I remember the man who had no legs, no arms said, you know, I could just wake up and say, I have no legs, no arms. Who is going to care? Or I could accept 
that there is one person who is going to do it because I'm doing it without arms and without legs. And in that moment, I believe that I could make an impact. I believe that people needed my message because the person who was saying it didn't have proof that they should be saying it. And for me, it is when I decided that there is someone who's going to learn from me and change their life and do the thing that they want to do because I'm from Africa, because there is no proof that I should be doing this, because there's no power here, there's no internet here, there's nobody here who's doing this. And that is exactly what qualifies me to do this. I'll tell you one other story, small story. One week ago, a woman came to me and said, you know what, Prima, when you started this podcast for the world's best kept secret, I was secretly watching you. I have been watching you since you had one subscriber, that was two months ago, to now when you have 500 subscribers. And you know, Rory, what I did is the first day I started the channel, I said, whoa, we have a YouTube channel, one subscriber, prima job. Yeah, let's go. And then when we had three subscribers, my husband subscribed and somebody else, maybe his mom, I don't know. And I was like, we have three subscribers, me, my husband, and my mother-in-law. And they kept sending the updates. And I said, yes, 10 subscribers. And this woman was watching, going, holy cow, is there someone who is shouting from the rooftops so that they have one subscriber in this industry? And I was so excited about it. People were like, yes, prima, let's do this. And she was confused because in her head, she was too late. She was like, oh, I'm too late. I can't start a podcast. But when she came two months ago and saw 500 subscribers, she was like, Prima, I want to be your guest. I said, okay. And then she told me the story. She said, I watched you celebrating one subscriber. And yesterday I saw you had 500 subscribers and I knew that it was not too late for me. And so whatever the thing you think disqualifies you is exactly why people need your message. That one subscriber you have, that's not a shame. There is someone going, she has one subscriber, she's doing it, I am starting. Whatever, that divorce you have, 10 divorces you have, that's exactly why you're the person for the job. Because there is someone going, she has 10 divorces, I have five, I am still worthy. Whatever the thing that you think disqualifies you, you're 50, exactly. There is someone at 61 going, am I late to the party? And you saying yes is going to help this person go, oh my God, she's doing it at 80. It means I can't start. And whatever it is, if there is a message on your heart, if you feel pulled or pushed, or you feel like you need to do that, if there's a small voice in your head, that is because there's someone on your knees praying and only you can impact them and get them to move because of the unique circumstances that disqualify you for the job. The ones you're thinking because, because. Those are exactly what this person needs to change their life. And I think the decision that needs to be made is, are you willing to have this person soul on your heart? Because if they can't wake up and do the thing they want to do, it's on you, practically. And really the answer is, are you willing to have all those souls on you because you couldn't say yes to the message. That is a question you have to answer, each one separately and each one in their own way. If there is a fire on your heart, that's because there's someone crying and praying every day and the transformation they're looking for is hidden in all of the imperfections that are stopping you from starting. So powerful. I know (laughs) that there are lights going on right now in heads. (laughs) People are going, wait a minute, I have this message. Tell us again how they can find you and work with you. My website will be rightfully in the comment section, primajob.com. There's one button I want you to click, and that is the button that says, become my guest. That button leads you to a 20-minute conversation. You don't have to be a guest. We don't have to record you, but it's 20 minutes. It's not recorded. I want to pour into the work you do. I want to say something that hopefully will shift. Let's have a conversation. Let's just have a tea. Let's just get to meet each other. Even if no business happens, it's fine. Even if we never get to record that message, it is fine. But I would love to meet you and I would love to listen to your dreams. And who knows? Very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love the work you do. I love the way that you look at legacy. I love that legacy means just get it out of your head. It doesn't have to be published. It doesn't have to be seen today. It doesn't have to be seen when you're still alive. 
But give those who love you, those who care about you, those who will be craving to know you. Give your great grandkids a chance to know your stories, what you thought and what you would have wanted to tell them. Press record, write. I love Rory's work. Dive in and do something that a hundred years later will still have people benefit from. I just love the work. I love how she sees legacy. And I think there is no more excuse why you can't have a legacy. Because now you don't even have to publish anything. I just love how you approach legacy. And there is no excuse. No excuse no more. If you love this podcast, here's a big ask. Will you share with your friends and family? Subscribe, give us a review, and a five-star rating. So that others looking to reinvent their lives will be able to get the help they're looking for. Thank you in advance.